Here we go. Thank you for attending Worldwide Slot Car Chat on Zoom. I'm your host, Greg Gab. The gang is all here. Oh, yeah, one, 135 is what we're at today. Uh, Gaza is back. And, you know, lots of people, you know, John and John and John and all the other Johns are here. So <laughs> you, can, you can see their faces. You've seen them before. Uh, we do have a new person who's who's chilling in the in the text chat because he doesn't have a microphone or camera and that's fine you can totally come to a zoom chat with no camera no microphone just sit and watch it unfold in front of your eyes live and jive us a little with some text in the message thing saying oh you guys are a bunch of know-it-alls and blah 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 or, or ask questions or give answers we've had People come in and, and give great answers in the text chat. So come on and join us. It's a lot of fun. You know, Google for Worldwide Soccer Chat on Zoom, ignore the video results, and you can find the invitations, blah, blah, blah. I All right. Where, I want to know where Dwayne Dewan, is. Dwayne, wasn't he driving earlier? He is. <laughs> he, he needs to pay attention to the road and not us. Yeah, he's, he's in his full size slot car. <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dewan, watch the road, not your phone. Okay, we're going to get started with some uh, show and tell as usual. Sorry, just distracted by the chat. So if you have something you want to show and or tell about, put your virtual hand up now so I'd be sure and call on you. I have a few 3D printed things that I'm going to show off, and I don't really want to start off with that. So if you get, if anybody out there has something they want to show and tell, you know, all right, Henry has something. So, so me and John pronounce your name differently. I'm curious, how did your parents pronounce your name? When they said, come here, how did they say your name? Be sure to unmute, you're still muted. <laughs> okay. Yep. It's Henry. Henry, all right, that's what you're called, Henry now. John, get it right. <laughs> Frenchman. Let me be the ultimate Canadian. I'm very sorry. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, eh? Uh, okay. but, uh, I'm going to tell you in, in Dutch that it's also difficult. It's Henry. Um, uh, they call you Henry or in French or Henri. Uh, they make a lot of mistakes about it. But what's in the name? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a stickler for pronouncing names how people like them pronounced. So I'm going to go with Henry unless you tell me otherwise. No, okay. Okay, Henry, you are first with show and tell. Take it away. Um, share screen. Yep. Let's try it again. How we do it. Uh, what I have over here, I want to go to. What the? Oh, yeah. This one. And then share screen. Did you, did you share the folder or screen? Because if you open that picture, we're not going to see it unless you shared your screen. You are, share, uh, you are screen sharing. Yeah, but yeah. unless you chose specifically screen versus the folder you were looking at, uh, right? Because now I just see your folder. I don't see the picture. I see the folder of pictures. Why the? <laughs> Watch the language. Yes. Go ahead and stop share. I'll stop your share. Yeah. And then hit share again, and then choose screen. Don't choose, you know, Windows Explorer or whatever. Just well, yeah, screen. and you might want to open up your photo first, perhaps. That's the other option. Open your photo and then share whatever photo viewer you're using. Yeah. And then click the final share. happen there will be a test for this on the final you, you weren't the first you won't be the last <laughs> i'm just glad everyone's having a snack or a liquid snack <laughs> or oh, breakfast yeah, bricky all right here we come there we go all right picture of car with light on it yeah okay um a few weeks ago, I had about uh, five, six people over here, and, uh, and we saw a drop of voltage uh, when we drove around uh, digital. And, uh, 
the I use normally the SRP motors 20,000. Uh, 20, and uh, these motors were 23,000 from slotted. And uh, when you get uh, to one lane uh, with four cars, then you lose your power. Um, uh, normally Carrera hasn't got a lot of uh, problems, but every section, every part of, of the Carrera track is a, a part of its own. And I have a spider under my track. Uh, I don't know if it's a, it's a wrong uh, word. We call it a spider. And uh, uh, it's, it was not uh, as if not enough. So we made, uh, Bart and I made two devices. On the left side, you see a car with uh, the voltage. And the right, the right side is a car with uh, a car lamp on it from, and it draws two amps. So I go and now I uh, have to do this in the minus, I think, yeah. So I go around of every trick of patch, of every every um, uh, single track and on in the left side and the right side to measure up uh, how many voltage I got left when a car of two amps drives around me, uh, behind me. So I saw at the moment a an, uh, an, an drop voltage of, of about uh, seven volts. So that's not okay. So I took everything out and I took um, normally a, a wire and I stripped it and every piece, meter by meter, I did a new copper wire in it. So, so you, you're doing essentially what Greg did and when he soldered each piece. Yeah. The, the advantage Henry has is that he can easily stuff the wire into the rail. Is that, isn't that what you did? Just stuff it into the rail? It, it, is it an advantage? <laughs> it's not yeah. easy, but, 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 but with oh, the rail, It's an advantage it. over having to solder four, eight Correct. connections Correct. for every track joint. <laughs> Henry, are you using that analog or digital? That's a digital, digital. Yeah, because uh, in analog, you don't have a problem with one car in one lane. But when you go uh, with five or six cars in one lane, then you have a problem. Yeah. Because every car draws about uh, a half amp. Just driving along, they'll yeah. pull, you know, an amp when they hit the gas. Correct, correct. And I have uh, on every lane, 10 amps. So uh, the left uh, side and of or lane one and lane two, they have a, a lab uh, a laboratorium of their own. They're both 10 amps, but I saw the difference and, and it was a big difference. Yep. And I, I knew that I had a problem because um, last Sunday I had uh, 18 drivers in a match over here. So <laughs> I knew I had to fix something. Yep. But this I saw last week, and I ordered them, and they are from DS. I don't know if you're familiar with the firm. DRS, Digital Racing hey, Solutions. Yeah. DS only. Oh, DS made some too? Okay. There's yeah, uh, multiple people that make them. I saw them also from Scale Auto. Yeah. They're not, uh, they're expensive because they're one euro a piece. Wow. Yeah. But they're and, copper, right? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, as you know, you, you need four in one piece. Uh, four in, in in one track. Yeah, in one joint. Yeah. Yeah, in one joint. Yeah. So uh, I've ordered it, and uh, I, I will uh, I will I will use it for, for some pieces. But the most of the track I uh, I did. Then I made something new. Uh, I call it the balancer. Mm -hmm. I think you are familiar with it or not. Yeah, I think you've shown the concept of this, or somebody else did at some point. Yeah. But it's it's already on the market uh, in in England. I've seen it. And uh, I've got one very similar. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Like uh, wasp? No, not wasp. Uh, we're we're all slot racing. We're all slot. Yeah. WSB. Yeah. It's a very nice Correct. one. Very very yeah. similar actually. Yeah. yeah. Now you see here on the left side, I do uh, two grams, and you see the bulb on the right side. Mm -hmm. And then you balance it with. Two of two grams, and then you're in the middle again. Mm -hmm. 
Hey, I'll, I'll bet you Petrucci's got two of those. <laughs> or will want two of those. <laughs> they're, they're remarkably responsive when you get the curve correct on the bottom of the on the bottom of the device. I was going to say it's going to be all about how smooth that curve is. Absolutely, they are they're, they're fantastic. But it's not the inline cars that tend to need much attention. It's the angle winders, I find, don't you, Henry? Correct, correct. And uh, so it's a new thing. And uh, I just distributed it over here, and uh, I think it's a it's it's a nice gadget. Yep. Henry, put a center line, and then turn your car sideways, and you can do four and a half weight also. Yep. Yeah, over here you see a center line. Yeah. And then you can, can cross the, the car and then you can balance them again. I wonder if there's a way to do a, because the guys are always talking about doing a 60-40 split between back and front weight. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> you, 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 would, you would measure from the center of either a front wheel or a back wheel to get, a, 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 and then obviously you would, or, <laughs> It depends on whether you want to go between the wheels or between the guide and the rear axle. Most of us, I think, would like to go between the guide and the rear axle. So as long as you know your axle, uh, your, your guide lead, you can measure from your, your rear wheel to your center line on your balancer. Totally correct. Divide up your, your all up weight. Yeah, you're on it. Or yeah, or yeah, divide, yeah, figure out the point where a balance would be 60-40. Yeah. Right, figure out the point on the length of your car where when the car is perfectly balanced on the scale, it's when your car is put on the scale such that it's at the 60-40 split, then the scale is balanced, right? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't do this, so I'm just trying to make sure that laymen like me know what they're talking about. <laughs> With this and the correct mathematics, it's not difficult to work out exactly what percentage you've got front and rear. And you haven't used any digital scales. You haven't invested in them. You've got this one device, and you can, you can get there. Yep. So I, I think it's a, it's it's a nice gadget. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin uh, on Slot Racer Online posted some models for three um, D printed clearance oh. gauges. Did you see that? No, 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 no. It wasn't no, a yeah. balancing thing. It was just a clearance gauge thing, but it was it was pretty nifty. I, I wish he'd pop on and show off his 3D stuff every once in a while. <laughs> I saw them online in England for about uh, 22 euros. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> and I cool. ordered some uh, some things from from AliExpress. The how do you call it? The the, the green stuff. Oh, uh, the, the, the from AliExpress. Guy. The it's a bubble level. The sticky stuff? Oh, the, the the bubble level is what you were yeah, talking about? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, I, it, believe, I believe it's called a spirit level. Spirit level? Yeah. It's 25 cents on AliExpress. Nice. And so does anyone know? capsule that you then put in your print. What you ordered on AliExpress is just a little capsule that is the bubble level, and then you put that into your print, right? Correct. Yeah. So where do these where do these bridges actually belong? Because I only know where there was a Dunlop bridge. I don't Le Mans. Know. It's on Le Mans. Which one? Oh, so there's a Dunlop on Le Mans. There's also one on. There used to be one on Donington Park circuit in Derbyshire. And I believe there might be one on Alton Park too, but I don't know where there's a Goodyear bridge. Don't know. I don't know. Probably. I only have. Uh, I, I, I took the Goodyear uh, bridge for example because this is the one you normally can buy. Yeah, and then the printer. But, uh, mm -hmm. but a customer asked me if I can make one for a four size lane. So after uh, don't don't scare me. Uh, after sixty six hours of printing, <laughs> I had a Dunlop. Yep. Yeah, that one's on Thingiverse. I've printed three or four of those for people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah I, I had them from from from, from Thingiverse. That's correct. But I think he, he's beautiful. It's he, fantastic. I, it's really I love good. that bridge. Yeah. Did it's you paint the white or is that white filament? Uh, no. Uh, you can't do that. Uh, maybe you can do that. I, I can't uh, because I don't have a, uh, a two filament printer. Uh, the, the models from Thingiverse don't have the letters as a separate part. So you, okay. print, the, you print the black all in one part and then you paint the letters 
Um, I did. I have not printed it yet, but the the slicer that I use for my Prusa multicolor machine allows me to paint it in the slicer, and then it can print in two different colors. I think so. Yeah. But I have not actually printed one using that method yet. So it's it's possible. I just haven't actually made it happen yet. Uh, I uh, bought a pencil for uh... white pen, paint pen. Yeah. Yeah. Because yep. first, first I want to try it with, with it's, it's a lot of work. It <laughs> it's a few hours work of, to do this. Yep. How high is it from the yellow stripe or the yellow under the Dunlop down to the uh, base of the track? Oh, huh. I have not uh, measured it. Um, I, the, measure it. I, race, I race motorcycles and some other higher. Uh, I don't think the motorcycle will fit under. Uh, so in There's, some of the higher car. Uh, yeah. And stuff yeah. Yeah. Well, what about like truck. fly trucks too, right? I wonder if it's yeah. high enough for that. There's so there's risers. I think. Uh, okay, no, the risers I'm thinking of are for the for the Goodyear, the, the Scholastic one. This particular print model was designed to go across four lanes of Carrera. So the it's base, uh, the, the nine and a half centimeters. Yeah. It's going to be over. But you uh, on thingy first, there are also risers. Uh, you see now a, a riser left and right. You can make that that one bigger, but there is a thingy first uh, a riser in in stone with with, with stone stone. Uh... Is, that for, is that for this one or is that for the Scalextric one? For the Scalextric one, it was developed by a really handsome man. Yeah, I don't think, the, I don't think the, the stone... <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> He's fine. Yeah. That was my design. I, I don't think this. I don't think there is a similar one for this bridge. The one that. Jeremy design that you're thinking of is for the for the Scalextric bridge, the smaller bridge. Okay, maybe, but but, but you, you can make rises by yourself. There's no problem at all. Sure, yeah, that wouldn't be hard. You can also scale that other one up to. Probably, yeah. And are the steps over it for the for the for the figurines? Yeah. Yeah, I could dig up some pictures of mine and put a bunch of homies in there. The really fun yeah. thing is that is that the way that it's designed. I think Henry did the same thing. On the on the side panels, you basically start with yellow, and then switch to gray, and then switch to dark gray, so that you have those three colors, all in one piece of printed material. Um, the yellow one is also uh, painted. Did you paint yellow? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's easy for me. Uh, but it's a lot of parts. Is here is one part, two parts, three parts, four parts. This is. Five, six parts, I'm, I think. So it's um, 66 hours is a long time to print, but yeah. I've, I've got three, three printers, so. It, and it's worth it. it. Look at, it's fantastic. It looks fantastic. Isn't it? That. Yeah. Yep. Um, that, and the, and the, and the, um, the Dunlop lap tower and the shell tower that, that, um, racer. Yeah, I have them. Yeah. Those are, those are great prints too. Don't know if, yeah. And then uh, I had last Sunday a race, and I have to make some prices. So I found this one also on Thingy Thurs, the background, and I found somewhere else a model of an Alpha, <coughs> nice. and I made a base. A base, yeah, with. So I have three wonderful original prizes. Those are great. And they're very good. It's nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Very nice. So that's it. I have an uh, also a club corner, but that's some later and don't know <laughs> all right. Hey, Henry, <laughs> if I will attend to that one because <laughs> it's all it's uh, one o'clock over it. Do you want to do your club corner now? Can I? Sure. Answer I don't, want, I, I I don't want to steal the show. No, no, no. It, it, this is, this is, uh, we're fluid. Wayne, did you have a last question for him? Uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to talk to him about the gaps I think I can see between these track pieces. Yeah, I mean, it's sectional. You know, <laughs> when you're, when you're trying to cram a, a layout on a table, sometimes that just happens. Yeah, and because they're now copper wired, yeah. left and right, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, yeah. Anymore. 
Yep, that was um, one of the other reasons I did <laughs> I did the same thing because like there were gaps that I could not get rid of, and now with the wires, it doesn't matter. Cars don't mind. Now I have uh, opened my uh, YouTube channel. Do you want me uh, to share the video? Yeah, please. Okay. You might need to give me the link. It's been a few. <laughs> It's been a couple of days. It's way down my my subscription list here. Is that easier if I send a link? Yeah, go ahead and post the link in the chat. We'll see who gets there first. Uh, share. Is there anyone in the chat that hasn't subscribed to Henry's YouTube channel, by the way? It's, it's really right. worthwhile. It's been... <laughs> <laughs> I want to be sure and put the link into the description at the very least, but if you want to go ahead and share the video, Henry, go ahead. I mean, worst case scenario, it's a, it's a bit of a slideshow more than, more than video. The, he's got some good videos in there as well uh, from some, uh, some drone videos I really enjoyed. The, uh, just uh, some great countryside and everything. Cool channel. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not I did a link to everyone. All right, let me open that up and then I'll share it. Pause. Share. Share. Okay. I, I did not share the audio. So we'll let you just talk over that. <laughs> I can hear it. How many cars were in the teams then, Henry? Eight. Eight. Okay. So one team had more than two. You said you had eight teams. So every two drivers had one car. So uh, it was teams teams of two. But that would be. And, so did you have sixteen people or or eighteen people? Anyways, eight cars. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it's sixteen. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, the largest race I've I've got uh, because I never had uh, drove uh, eight cars on the tracks. That's why I knew that I, had, I, I should be in problems, and that's why uh, we did a week uh, building on the track to get yeah better power on the track. Oh, here you see the stand of Dunlop. I love your track. Uh, thank you. And now I'm working on a, on something that I can work on the unsafe releases because uh, uh, seven people of, uh, uh, are driving this for the second time in one year. So they never drove uh, uh, digital. So uh, that's not easy for them because there is so much involved with, with, with digital driving. Uh, but I love it. We had a blast, and uh, I, I do also the catering that day. And uh, they, they 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 give me ten euros. They get a car, they get a, a controller, and they get food for all the day and drinks. Oh, everything is free. Nice. And uh, uh, yeah, they found it wonderful, really. And it was also an uh, an interesting race. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Sebastian. When? Of him. <laughs> yeah, everyone in, him, yeah, everyone in digital knows Sebastian, or in this part of the world knows Sebastian. Yeah. And um, he beats me again. <laughs> not not with, a lot, with a lot of laps, but he beats me again. That's why you need him to be your teammate. <laughs> yeah, he isn't this year. Is that the 3D printed uh, bridge as well? Correct. Wow. Oh no, the bridge at the end. The big, the big tower bridge. On the right. Yeah, yes. right here. Right yeah, here. it's a Dunlop. Yeah. Yeah. I've printed that I one, but looked... I haven't built it yet. <laughs> a customer asked for that one, so I've, I've only sent it off, and he never sent me pictures back. <laughs> How many hours is that one? That one's a huge. So one, many. It? <laughs> so okay. many. So many. So many. That's like yeah. six days or something. <laughs> I basically have both of my printers cooking for a week. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. This, but this I, is I have my I have track. my control it in is. the tower. I have my uh, race management system with lights. Okay, so that's your for analog, huh? Yeah. Yeah. 
because I, I can drive the, tra the track on three ways. I can drive it career digital, mm. oxygen digital, and analog. Nice. How, how long was the race? Uh, two races of one and a half hour. So in, uh, totally three hours. Okay, I, I got a podium, second. Okay. Not last, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's it. Very nice. Oh, I didn't. There we go. All right. well, uh, I'm, I'm very proud to, to find so many people who wanted to drive uh, uh, digital over here. And uh, it's, it's, it's my home place, of course. And uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a bargain to, to find so many people who want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's worth it. Just right. uh, doing it, uh, doing it, and doing it, and, 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 and ask people. And at, at the end, you have uh, uh, a big party. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I've 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 posted this in various places on various subjects. Okay. Years and it's basically Greg's guide to starting a club. Number one, pick a name. Number two, pick a location. Number three, set a date and time and invite the world. <laughs> Repeat number three as necessary. Correct. <laughs> once you get one and two done, you just. All you're doing from then on is just setting a date and, and inviting people. Please come race. Please come race. Please come race. You um, left one out. It should be serve food. I, I was mean, about to say that's the same. Just, that's, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, unwritten, you know, part of hosting an event. But yeah. yeah it sounds if, like he's cracked it there. If, if you think that the food is the main draw, then yeah. I, I do. When I, when I post the announcements for my races, I usually say, yeah, f f you know, Snacks and drinks provided. <laughs> Loners <Yeah>. available. <laughs> but that, that's why it's a lot of work to organize it. It's very, it's very much a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because all they don't have the cars, they don't have the controllers. I have to fix the cars. I have to find them that they're eagle. Because at the end of the day, they say, "Hey, I didn't like the ketchup." Man. <laughs> that's quite easy. That, that's quite easy. The ketchup. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like the ketchup. Better get Heinz. <laughs> once you've done this a couple, of, once you've done this a couple of times, Henry, you'll 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 find the ball's already gotten rolling, and people will start turning up with their own cars and controllers, will they not? Well, that's the second time, right? This is the second time, yeah, yeah. Uh, I find this is another club who comes from Friesland, from, from Slot Racing to go the store in Friesland, and uh, uh, they want to go uh, drive uh, digital also when. Mauricio has his uh, acrostics ready. So uh, the, I invited him. So on, do you want to get a taste of digital driving? You can go with it over here. And um, they like it so much. Because, uh, on our club, we had a rally uh, BLST at, at my own club. Um, they get rid of it last week. And they're going to, to make the same track I've got over here in Carrera. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so they didn't like the BLST, uh, not at all. And they're going to replicate not the same track, but they bought last week everything from Carrera. They like the way I drive oxygen on a Carrera track. Uh, um, and you can change it if you want to normally oxygen because it's a C chip. And uh, uh, we're going to build a new track uh, at our own club. So that's awesome. it's a success. <laughs> What do you have? What do you have to do to switch it over to oxygen? Uh, Very little. <laughs> for you, you have a career track. Uh, there are things to consider about. Uh, your career track is powered differently, so the plus is on the left side or on the right side, and analog is different. So you have to change that. But that's that's only a, a thing to do. And when you uh, 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 can make contents constantly power on the track as analog uh, on the analog way, then you can drive oxygen, because in your C chip you can program it to D one thirty two, and then your oxygen chips are going to um, see your lane changers of Carrera, and then you're on. Yeah, I mean simply I mean, simply said. Simple as that. Yeah, ba basically the only thing you need to do to run 
oxygen on a Carrera track is, in fact, you don't even need to do anything with the power. You can, you can slap the, you can put your car in, you know, the right polarity. When you put the chip in, you can just swap the wires so that it's using Carrera polarity and put some magnets under the track in the appropriate places. And then everything else works, you know, as long as you're using. The, the magnets are for, because uh, the oxygen chips works with the hall sensor. Yeah. And the hall sensor are indicated with a magnet. So when you go over a magnet, it gives it's, uh, the, the chip uh, a command, like uh, one round, or do you want to go to into your pit, et cetera, et cetera. I don't say it easy, but <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, because it drives so, because I, I, I drive with my uh, my grandchildren I drive a digital career because it's easy and it's uh, you you can wreck it because are, are phenomenal yeah. uh, uh, but when I uh, it's it, it's not even close to analog driving and when you're going to drive uh, oxygen you're pretty close pretty close but your commands of digital go through the rails from Carrera. And oxygen is, um, how do you call it, Brack? 2.4 gigs wireless, isn't it? Over it's wireless, air. yeah. So air. that's the, the big difference. Yeah. And the response, I mean, that basically you the, the end result is a faster response time between your Correct. motion and the car's response to that. And, and you're more in control because yeah. with career digital you have on your say you a break two four six eight ten and even so with your speed and with oxygen you control almost everything yeah we but can talk about that till the cows come home but i think it's time to move on uh so uh henry i want you to stick around till my show and tell hopefully you can otherwise watch the replay Jeremy, you are next, and then we'll get to Jim. So last time I was on, I had the uh, 3D printed chassis from Vlad, and they were all warped, and I couldn't figure it out. But I finally got it figured out how to use this resin, so it's a little better now. Um, I got it mounted, and now there's no weird warping of the body. Everything seems to fit, so that's the 510. Well, that uh, looks really good, Jeremy. Oh, great. I was I was gonna paint it, but we had like twenty mile an hour winds here tonight, so I was like, "Uh, never mind." Because no, I like it. I like, I but, like this. But so <laughs> so far, he's gonna still he's gonna get me a windshield buck so I can design those. But everything works now. Um, I got the Volvo also printed, and it, it's holding up pretty well. So there's no like floppiness. I found out Jeremy, you have to buy the print before you can do anything. Yes. What resin are you using? Because I'm that, struggling to get that to print out. Yeah, that is Soraya Tech Blue. Blue, yeah. All right, yeah, I've got some of that here, but I haven't opened it yet. So, so uh, yeah, when you do it, when you when you print it, it prints out nice. Let you know, let it drip dry off the resin, and then yeah. then I, I put it in my first vat of alcohol to clean. You know, just for yes. a few minutes, just like I think I left, left it in there like five minutes and swished it around pretty good. Take it out and let it dry, and I let mine dry overnight. And when, once uh, it does that first dry, it kind of hardened to where it's supposed to be, like it came off. Then I washed it again in my cleaner uh, alcohol a second time for five minutes and let it dry and then cured it. That was my problem. Yeah. I was I was going too fast from washing to curing and not letting it stiffen. Yeah, mine aren't distorting. They're just starting to get very fragile, that's all. But I'm only using basic resin at the moment. So I'll try the Syria Tech and see how we go. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that, that Syria Tech Blue, I can throw it on the floor. Well, I can drop it on the floor. It doesn't crack or shatter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so yeah. If I threw it hard enough, I could get it to break. And you're using that straight? You're not mixing it with anything else? No, I'm doing it straight. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a little more expensive, but it, it works. That's what exactly. it's for. It's, yeah. it's basically a strong formulation. Yeah. It has a little bit of flex in it, but not. But it keeps its its shape. I mean, I, so can, I can still things, kind man. of bend it a little bit if I want to. You gave yeah. up on the tough? I gave up on what? The tough. Uh, no, I still got some. I'm just trying to get through all of this. I mean, I've got a bunch of different things. Uh, I just I hate to clean the whole vat if I'm already on the blue. I just stick with the blue until it's done, and then I clean it. No. When I get to the next resin and stuff, I'll definitely go in. To, and then I also got some like ABS hard stuff that's supposed to be. I was gonna try a chassis with that one. Probably, I'll yeah, probably I mean, try one of Brian's chassis with that. See how it yeah, holds I mean, up. I haven't done a chassis and resin yet. I, to me, FDM yeah. is still the way to go there. I think. 
Yeah, I did one in resin and it, it, it breaks too easy. So that's why I was hoping some yeah. of the tougher resins hold up. Mm. That's all I had. All right. Thank you, sir. And Jim, you are next. Well, hi there. Can you hey. hear me? Been been a long time. <laughs> yeah, I pop in now and then. Uh, I've been traveling a lot. I went up to um, uh, Detroit and uh, uh, visited uh, the guys at uh, at M and M Racing Henderson Raceway. Uh, ran a race with them. Very nice uh, four lane wood track in the basement. Great club with uh, uh, just a, a great group of guys. I had uh, twelve entered in the race, and um, they ran. Uh, uh, Three classes, uh, NSX, uh, uh, excuse me. Um, anyway, they ran ran most ran three different three different uh, three different classes, and I had a good time with them. And then I went to uh, Downriver Raceway, uh, commercial raceway in uh, the south of area of Detroit. Um, beautiful uh, uh, facility with a king track and a hill climb and and a trial wall and. A uh, surprising inventory, uh, including the good inventory, including lots of model kits and um, uh, a lot of vintage parts. Uh, was interesting to see that in a in a in a current commercial raceway. Um, and a couple others also went to New Jersey, visited uh, four raceways there. And uh, uh, the biggest puzzle in New Jersey for me was um, uh, Teaneck Speedway. Anybody heard of Teaneck Speedway? You can find them uh, on Facebook and they have a website. Uh, they have seven uh, full sized commercial tracks. What uh, city are they in? What's that? What town or city are they in? In Teaneck, T E A. Oh, Teaneck. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Teaneck Speedway, yeah. Uh, and a uh, uh, huge facility, seven large commercial tracks, everything very um uh, pretty uh clean uh but uh uh, uh carlo uh tom Alesi wrote this book some of you might have seen his most recent book was trying to get a racing program going there uh, after he wrote this book he discovered that someone had opened a raceway just a few blocks from his home and uh, it may be the largest raceway in the country now as far as having by by number of, of tracks and, and and facility size but uh he hasn't really been able to get a racing program going there it's been very frustrating for him Play, the so place with seven tracks can't get a racing program going yes uh i i don't want to uh get into all of the details there but basically uh i I, I it's like an amusement it, arcade. Yes, I mean, it, it, location, it, location, location. You know, it sounds like yeah, might not be in a yeah. It, it it is painted like an amusement arcade uh, on the walls, and they do have a separate room with um, an amusement arcade in it, and a separate party room. Uh, not much really for pit space. Uh, you'd expect more pit space in a commercial raceway, but apparently the owner is really focused on on doing parties and events yeah. and does not care about having a racing program at all. Um, and Carlo has not been able to, to uh, make that happen as yet. <clears throat> I hope he does because uh, uh, the facility is certainly worthy of it. Um, I mean, from, what, from what I've heard from other facilities, parties are a very large portion of the revenue and, and you know, race, yeah. you know, clubs and, and stuff like that not so much but right is he doing well in parties i mean is he <laughs> i don't know you know i didn't did not actually talk to the owner um uh i i got all the gory details of what uh, about carlos frustration um and i visited um at at two o'clock on a sunday uh the place was empty the kid behind the counter I asked him asked him about the racing program, um, and he didn't know anything about it. Even though, on the counter between he and I was a flyer for the racing program. <laughs> uh, I asked him how long he'd been working there. He said four months. Um, 
very strange. Um, Perhaps, Jim, you, you, you should have said you were the undercover boss. Well, <laughs> um, I, I, even know. I, I acted like I could be a really good customer, although I'm not local to him, so that wouldn't have been true. But I, I asked him about, well, um, I'd like to come back and bring my cars, but I noticed that you've got all these wonderful tracks and none of, and none of the timing systems are turned on. Um, could you turn one on for me? No, we don't turn them on. This is one of the things Carlos complained, complained about was that uh, uh, nobody seemed to know how to use the timing systems or there were glitches with them. They just basically don't use them. Right? The, the, the kid behind the counter, uh, like I said, he said he'd been working there four months. I asked him if the place was busy. He said, oh, yeah, we're, 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 we're busy. Um, uh, but we're pretty much only open on weekends, right? So we're, we're busy on, on, on weekends. We do parties on weekends. But I was there for an hour and a half in the middle of Sunday afternoon and saw not one other person. So maybe I just missed them. I mean, um, was this? It wasn't last weekend, was it? No, this was um, four weeks ago. J Jim, I have news for you. You were the party. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, so anyway, I, I drove a couple of tracks. Tracks very nice, um, but uh, astonishing to me that that someone would put that much into a facility like that. Uh, basically, Carlo told me that 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 the owner said, you know, you can run a racing program during the week because I rarely ever have a party, you know, during the week. So here's the keys. So he had five day a week access to this place at no cost, right? Um, and still couldn't make it work somehow. I, hard for me to understand, um, but uh, he has- I was gonna say, uh, being in New Jersey, do you have to turn left to get to the raceway? Because in New Jersey, that becomes a problem, turning what left. <laughs> turning left. I see, I see Neil laughing, he knows what I'm- I didn't hear you clearly. Oh, I said, do, do you have to turn left to get into the raceway? Because because in New Jersey, turning left is a problem. Everything is one-way streets or something? I'm, I'm... No, no. This, uh, are you, the raceway is in Teaneck, but have you ever heard about the teapot handle turns in New Jersey? You have to turn oh. right to go left always. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the highways. Uh, yeah, the, the building, one of the th things that Carlo... Uh, told me when he said, oh, the place is hopeless, hopeless, is he complained that the fire department wouldn't let them have, or the building department wouldn't let them have a, a larger sign. Uh, the building is in the center of town. Uh, it's in a multi-story um, uh, office building and it's in the basement. Um, so there is a small sign on the door uh, and then when you go into a lobby, there's a sign in the interior that directs you to the to the basement. Uh, but yeah, I, I told him, I said, slot car tracks are, are a destination um, uh, thing. It's it's something that, that people are going to discover on the internet or through friends or whatever. And uh, I, I really don't think that that um, yeah, there's, not, there's, not, a lot, there's not a lot of walk-in traffic, is there? No, no, yeah. I don't really think that's that's compelling. I mean, when I had my raceway in San Diego, um, we were in an industrial uh, area, a uh, nice area, but um, no significant amount of, of walk, you know, walk in traffic. But twice a year, the city had an event where you were encouraged to, uh, to put, if you had something to sell or, or, or service to offer like we did, you could put signage on a, on a nearby um, very busy road. And uh, I did that and I could count on one hand the number of people that ever responded to those signs. So uh, I, I don't believe that that uh, the signage is, is critical. Um, where, where are anyway. they from, New Jersey? Huh? Are they from New Jersey? <laughs> were they from New Jersey? <laughs> yeah, the people who responded. <laughs> they were trying to turn left. No, no, that, maybe that was the problem. They had to turn left. If you have a fuel race at the New Jersey track, does the owner have to come up and fill the cars up for you? <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Probably right. so. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. 
Um, yeah, and it's in Bergen County where almost nothing is open on Sunday. Uh, they still have blue laws there about that. Very hard to have a business open on Sunday. But anyway, um, so that, that's not, anyway, that's that's not really show and tell. It's just where I've been uh, lately. Uh, what I wanted to show and tell was uh, actually on Friday, we're running our um, uh, World Challenge uh, proxy event. Um, there's that, and you guys can see the Facebook and, and uh, website on that if you're interested. Um, uh, so I'll be going uh, Friday to uh, open the packages and see what's, what's come and, and run them. Um, and I have a few of my own here. I thought I'd show and tell a couple of those and then uh, let you guys go about your business. Go ahead. So let me flip the camera around. Okay, so here's the slot car, the slot car box. A lot of my slot car stuff is vintage because it's, it's a good, most of the bracket rate, most of the racing we do is bracket racing. So they don't have to be all that fast. They just have to be consistent and you have to know what they'll do. So, um, and it, at the race that we're doing on Friday, the proxy race, uh, we uh, will have um, old hardware like that. Um, I think you can see that. That, that looks home. straight out of model car racing out of 1966. That's yeah, really is that cool. the Rusket? Yes, right. Yes, yeah, that's that's basically a, a slightly modified Rusket Dragster. Uh, 66 is exactly right. Uh, slot car drag racing was a big deal then. And one of the things we did in the um, with this proxy event is we wanted to accommodate those guys. And so um, we have our, um, uh, we have, we, we run these standard on 24 volts uh, with an option to run on, on, on 36. Uh, so they get to run the way they did in the day. Uh, you can, you know, I, I routinely run this on the standard 14.6 that pretty much everybody runs now. Uh, and they're not terribly fast, which doesn't matter for, for, for bracket racing, but um, when uh, for this uh, proxy event, we wanted them to uh, to really uh, want to see what they could do and make it uh, a little more challenging. Um, here's a goofy thing. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's really cool. Um, three motor. Yeah, this was three. This is a uh, three thirty six D motor wow. dragster. That's, that, um, that would be what like TV Tom, Tommy Ivo would run or something. Yes, yes. In fact, it's um, sort of inspired by uh, this. Let me grab this. Mickey Thompson. M Mickey Thompson. Yes. Oh or, yeah, or, cool. So there's there's Mickey Thompson. Uh, uh, Tommy Ivo, excuse me, uh, twin engine. Uh, uh, one of his twin engine dragsters that's a die yep. cast car. And he, he had a four engine at one and, point, didn't he? Yeah, well, yes. He actually modified this one into a four engine car and it, it went through a number of iterations. But um, uh, this shape to the chassis was was a popular one at the time. There were a couple of chassis builders that were building that, them that way. And um, so uh, this actually, I, I, I bought this... This base chassis came in a collection. Someone had actually bent this part, um, but the rest of it was had a very poor motor mount system and poor drop arm. So I, I completely reconfigured the thing and went crazy with the with the three uh, three motors. And by the uh, way, I, I love your Jungle Jim and Jungle Jane there. Uh, yes, yes, Jungle Pam actually. Uh, right, Jungle Pam. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, sorry. that's not Jungle Pam. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, nearly enough silicone there. Yeah. One of the things <laughs> that we had to do with this, of course, is it's got a stack of uh, of guide washer uh, guide weights here um, uh, on this on this shaft, so that you can um, uh, adjust the uh, the weight to get just the right wheelie out of it. All the <laughs> 
just move what's it what what gear ratio is that thing running with the torque of three of those motors uh it's a good question uh it seems to me it's right about uh 2.6 to okay. one mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah it's it's fun goes pretty well um that's the kind of stuff people are sending in for that proxy love it yeah yeah wow. well i expect we'll see um uh mag winders mo uh, mostly that seems to be what you guys are interested in speaking of jungle jim and pam that's my, my oh jungle yeah jim that no, I did. that's awesome that is um, so awesome <laughs> that's probably the only chevy monza worth owning yeah really yeah that's pretty cool so Daycon Monzos were cool. Yes. There you go. You're right. And I don't know. Uh, anything else here of interest? Of course, there's the another big old Pittman powered car. I need to find a driver for this. Find some little guy brave enough to sit in it. This is pretty much a production chassis, but the motor has been turned 90 degrees from the way it was designed. I just think it looks and works better that way. Well, that's some fantastic stuff, sir. Thank you very much for sharing. All right, let me show one more and I'll let you guys go. Okay, one more. I'm going to hold right. you to that. <laughs> sure. Very cool. So it's a billet aluminum chassis with a uh, KTM motor. And it can looks run. Like it's, it looks like that chassis was machined from a piece of aluminum channel or something. Yes. Yeah. I, I think it was a uh, block because it's closed on the, on the front side of the motor. It's machined oh, wow. from a, from a bar. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of shavings. Yeah. yeah that's a, <laughs> that's a lot of weight reduction there. Yeah. So well, that's it for now. Nice. Uh, we'll definitely have more time later. You can always show off some stuff. Uh, does anybody else have any show and tell? Looks like I'm the last person to go. So I will go ahead and go. It's 3D printing stuff. So you can look away now if you don't care. Does anybody <laughs> want to take a wild guess as to what this thing is? Controller trigger. A lot controller throttle. Or SP. Yeah, Alan. Controller trigger, slot it. SCP it. controller yeah. trigger. There you go. Correct. Yeah. So I re so I reverse engineered or AKA measured and then catted the trigger uh, thing that the, tr the 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 trigger attaches to, so that I could then model new triggers, just for the heck of it. But mainly because the original trigger has this rubber pad that yep. sometimes come off or get sticky yep. or wear or whatever. Yep. Um, and I also decided to do the two the two finger cutout jobby to see how that would feel. Nice. Oh, that was a surprise. So yeah, so I've put this on printables.com. I'm going to put the link in the description. So if you have an SCP and access to a 3D printer, or if you know a person with a printer and want to get uh, a different trigger or replace a worn trigger or whatever the case may be, that file is now available on printables.com. And Greg, we've noted your color choice for those triggers. It's crazy and weird. Uh, totally unexpected. <laughs> uh, looks and, more... and have, you, have you modeled the, thing, the single finger? Was the first picture the single finger one? No, they're all two fingers. Um, I have not modeled the single finger, but that would be as easy as just chopping off the end of the model for for being single finger. So that's, that's smooth. I, I also I plan to... Yep. Upload either the step file or the fusion file so that it's easier to modify. So if you wanted to make your own trigger, it's just a matter of downloading the file and, and manipulating the, the 3D file. Or so if anybody has a request that says, hey, Greg, could you please blah, 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 a trigger? And yeah, I'll do that. So, 
So yeah, apart yeah. from the obvious yellows and blues, then what would the perfect colour be? Would it be transparent yellow or transparent red? Oh no, we all know that pink is the fastest colour. Come on. Correct. <laughs> I've got a nice hot bubblegum pink that that uh, Dennis would surely love. <laughs> Great. I don't think. For us, um, our team, we would care what color it is. <laughs> but one thing that we are struggling with still is that uh, two of the members of our team, uh, Gas Monkey Racing for Oxygen Digital, use a, uh, a single trigger and one uses a double trigger. And, you know, I can see that his driving is compromised because he has to use a single trigger because you can't use the double trigger with one finger if, you, if you're using your middle finger. So kind of one of the things I'd really like to get to do is to build a trigger that has some kind of way to do both or to make it hot swappable somehow. So I think we'll download your, your map and then you'll see us chop it up one way or another. <laughs> if you come up with something that, I, or if you come up with an idea that I can implement in the model, yeah. by all means, let me know that I designed them to be fairly snug. So you could conceivably use it without installing the nut and bolt to hold it on there, it's pretty snug. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, you know, it depends on how the person pulls on the trigger, you know, whether or not their driving is gonna cause the, the trigger cover uh, to come yeah, off. Yeah, Mark's one of those guys who almost breaks the handle when he gets to pull through for his Yeah, he'll, he'll <laughs> probably work that trigger off without <laughs> another bolt in there. So yeah, some way to plug I in. Wonder yeah. I wonder if the obvious compromise is to put, make one at 1.5 length. Uh, you can also cut off a finger. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. No, oh, that's, that's for really dedicated already. drivers, though. That's pretty dedicated. One thing we have done is to take the double lens slot it trigger and chop it down so that it's, you know, just an extra millimeter and a half, something like that. And that allows you to unpick the rubber um, that goes around it, create a channel, and wrap the rubber around the hole at the bottom of the trigger. And that stops that kind of um, flaring and, and breaking away that the rubber trigger, the rubber pad on the trigger seems to have. But yeah. it's all bad I compromises. Am... And and the one thing about oxygen racing is, you know, you can hot swap the controllers, but yeah. if something goes wrong with the race, then so much information is in the controller, you could end up losing laps and that kind of thing. So we really do try and stick with one control. Mm. But we've not found a good compromise yet. They're all bad compromises when you've got a team of three or four or five people racing. Yeah, if you if you can think of something, I mean, everything that's going through my head right now would not be re something that would be reliable over an extended period of time. But there I is got a, you guys. There's an option to clone. <laughs> what were you going to say, Bill? I got you. I got four fingers. I already oh. took one off. <laughs> and one of the I'm guys all set. The club drives, Show me the way. Drives with his middle finger because his his he still got his index finger, but it got busted up, so he drives with his middle <laughs> finger. But so he's driving like this the whole time. Henry, what Alan, is fast. Alan, there's, there's an option to clone. The people? <laughs> no. Yes. The trigger. <laughs> clone the people. You mean, no. That's a typical There, there is an option to. <laughs> yeah, there's an option for, for cloning the SAP. Oh, okay. Uh, no, the, so you can the, drive with an RSAP. Yeah, we, we, we have that. I have a hot swappable pair of SCP 2s. Uh, but we're never that comfortable with the whole thing about unplugging and replugging and everyone having their own controller. And, you know, we've seen other teams suffer with that, where they hot Correct. swap and yeah, then you, lose, you can lose laps. Yeah. Uh, and I thought when you talked about cloning, I thought you were talking about people. It's like, yeah, get me another Mark Longer or Graham Eldridge, but make them do what they get told to do this time. You know, <laughs> typical corporate pipe dream, you know, get me another Wilkinson, but get, get me one who turns up to work on time. <laughs> well we can, talk about, we can we can talk more about ideas for the trigger later i wanted to move on i did okay. some things for paul if he comes back this will be a surprise to paul because i don't think he's on today but last week he was asking me to do some sunoco or sunoco or however you pronounce it things for him to stick on things and i decided to take it a step further and make him some of my controller keychains with his name and, and oh, nice. logo on there so he's going to get a surprise in the mail in, a, in, I don't know, a few weeks, depending on how fast mail moves. And I also wanted to show, last week I showed a video of the racing that we did at one of the tracks where my bobble, my Stig bobblehead was on the track. So here's a decent picture of the Stig bobblehead 
I don't have a video of his head bobbling, but you know, trust me, it, it bobbles. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, just getting that crap out of the way. Anybody got any questions uh, on that before we Rick, move on? I, I see a new thing for a price for for prizes with in in a, in a race. Yeah, bobbleheads. The stick. <laughs> the stick bobbleheads. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. John, you've got something to share? Yes, I do. Yeah, All right. This is uh, not a slot car, but I'm kind of a racing history nut. So, you know, that uh, informs everything I do practically with slot cars, which is unfortunately not all that much. Yep. <laughs> anyway, I found this uh, DVD on, on eBay, and it's pretty unusual. Yeah. I'd never heard of it before. And I actually thought I was buying a book. And when it came, it turned out to be this DVD that's uh, nine, it was made in 2008. It's uh, uh, the DVD was made a film that was taken from 1966 through 73. And the film is various, some of it's uh, two inch, the old two inch real real video uh, that TV stations used long, 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 Time ago, some of it is 16 millimeter and super 16, and, and there's even some super eight or something mixed in there with it. But it's really, really good. It's a really, really good look at the uh, uh, the Can Am uh, cars. Uh, now they call all of it is color. It has some nat sound, natural sound with it that actually syncs up well and everything. It's I think uh, I think it also John, that's that's the DVD that, sh that Bruce McLaren explains most for. Uh, yeah, yeah, they they do a lot with Bruce. They they have him. They interview him uh, uh, on camera several times, or at least they shoot him being interviewed, or they shoot him uh, uh, giving his uh, trophy acceptance speech. You know, his big check speech when after he's won the race several times. And it's it's it spends a lot of time on Bruce and Denny and uh, Jim Hall is in it. Uh, Sam Posey, uh, as you may see, is uh, the, one of the narrators. Jim Hall narrates a little bit uh, regarding his cars. And, Posey did a good uh, job of the of the narration too, as I recall. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's really really good. And I think I paid about ten bucks for it, maybe less. It was used, but it works fine. So. <laughs> As long as you still have something that can play a, a DVD. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. yeah well, no, yeah, not, even, not I don't even have a computer that has it. I was going to say, they don't even drive mean. anymore. <laughs> well, none of mine do either, but you can buy accessory DVDs that, oh, that yeah, work of on USB port. <laughs> yeah, I have uh, that one. I have that one here somewhere. Yeah. I haven't watched it for many years now because of that. Yeah, it's, it's, I was really surprised how good that this is. There's a lot of, Pretty poor stuff out there, and uh, uh, this this one's I think is well worth it. Nice little that's all I had. Find there. Cool. Good stuff. Very yeah. cool. Very well, cool. well, well, to slot car related, most of those cars in that video you can buy as slot cars. Yeah, absolutely, well, absolutely. And, and a lot and of, them, of them, some of them are coming, like like the uh, shadows and that kind of. Yeah. thing. they're on the way. So, well, I don't think they'll ever skip any of these. Uh, there's some really well, good a, a stuff of, folks, of the sorry. early Can-Ams, too. Uh, some really good sh shots of the the very early McLarens and, and uh, other cars. Yeah, because I believe they start off with the US RRC at, uh, in, in California, where they show, show Jim Clark driving a Lotus 40, right? Yeah, that's th there are some shots. I don't know whether it was the US RRC. I guess it yeah. probably was at that point. But they. I can't remember if they if they uh, uh, actually explain it as being the USRC rather than Can Am or not. Yeah, because it was before right. Can Am, because Can Am didn't start till what sixty six, right? Seven. Yeah. Can Am started in sixty six, and yeah. but USRC and Can Am raced uh, together in sixty six. So the one series okay. was early in the year, and the second and the Can Am series were later. Right, and then, but, but but that USRC was was older than the can. That was kind of oh yeah yeah. It happened yeah. before that, but yeah. I seem to remember that in '66 at least the two series both ran. Yeah, the, US, the USRRC I think was run uh, 
a little differently by, by the SECA. And of course, when the Can-Am came along, it was a pro series. USRRC allowed both, uh, you know, or, or involved both amateurs and pros. Mm -hmm. and, and the Can-Am was a pro series. In, yeah, uh, yeah, it was actually the first series to offer a million dollar purse. Yeah. Which, the, which is why the, a lot of the F1 guys went to uh, to drive there. There, there, was, the, there was more money in Can-Am than, than Formula One. And if it wasn't for Can-Am, McLaren would not, would not exist. That's exactly right. And, and one of the coolest trophies anybody's ever come up with, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, my, my favorite is when Oscar Kowaleski and, and Bruce McLaren came up with a turtle because it was sponsored by Turtle Wax. And they put yeah. a little, a little um, aerodynamic device on the poor little turtle. It yeah, was really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's steer this back to slot cars for, for the next hour. Uh, Gary, do you have some show and tell or did you want to do some Club Corner? Oh, just some show and tell as soon as I right, can climb away. up printing again. Um, let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. I was um, playing around and um, decided to re do a revamp of the old Sky Electric uh, cool. fencing and all that sort of stuff. And oh, that's 3D printed? Yeah, 3D printed, the fence, the posts. Cool. Um, the inserts are changeable, so mm -hmm. you can um, swap around to uh, whatever you want. Nice. So <clears throat> those those, those look better than the Scalectrics. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of um, little bit of tweaking in that on it. They're, they're quite easy to print, a little bit of time involved in it. But uh, the inserts were the main thing I did it for was um, you get a variety of what you want then, of uh, different makes, models, and everything else. Oh, Gary, uh, hold on a minute. There looks like a 3D printed chassis there. You can't get away with that now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's just an old um, Carrera one I was playing with, trying to uh, found and um, just printed it to, to go with um, a different model car, see what it fits under. Um, yeah, just oh, like the it. old design, try, try and find the old design or redesign that one. And painted by hand because, uh, number one, I don't have a dual color thing, but it's also very uh, therapeutic. It's and, also uh, more authentic. Yeah. It's also more authentic. Well, yeah, yeah, and there's a variety of different makes, models, and fences, and whatever it is. So, yeah, like I think it's what one, two, three, four, six pieces get you a meter in length. So you can sort of design around the posts. You can do corner posts or whatever to make little infills. And I've made the the gates as well. I just don't have photos of them. So, as I said, very therapeutic. Do they Are they flexible enough that you can curve them? Yeah, yeah. Well. What the good thing about the PLA is that if you just put it in warm water, you can actually curve it around a normal true. sort of radius on a yeah, on, on a scale electric track if you wanted to. But a, lot, a few guys have got them just for uh, a little display, a couple of pieces of track with an old vintage car sort of thing, and just put it in there and um, uh, put put their favourite car or different cars sort of thing in it. And um, yeah, the old Shell Falcon. There's there's a bit of blue and yellow there. Um, <laughs> Thank right? you. Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. they're going for about four hundred dollars now. If you want yeah. one, yeah, I got a couple from a guy down there. That's about how much I felt <laughs> I paid. The, so the well, that's it. That's the they're one of the original V8s that came out when they first started producing the Aussie V8s. Uh, and believe it, as I said, that one there is goes for about three to four hundred dollars, which is ridiculous. That particular one. Fortunately, there's too much red on there for my taste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so do the fences attach to the track, or just are held up by the posts? They just by the posts um at this stage so i've just got it so that with the posts there they've got a little base on it and they're free stand uh if you want to put a bit of glue at the bottom of that base stand there and just stick the post in or the post itself has a hole up through the center if you wanted to get real technical you can put a bit of brass or something there and just relay it around yep. the track so that's just a decorative sort of thing that's about all yep. really just curious and that's a um that's a i don't have a good photo of that one that's a display thing that i made the same sort of thing as as uh, Henry did before, except I, it's a, I copied it off a HO one that they had, and it's a the Mustang thing at the back is an insert that goes into the the slide thing, so that you can use the base and the two sides, and then just make up whatever you want to yeah. make uh, for a display thing. That one's got the Mustang, and there's a few other yeah. different things, and uh, that's it. Very cool. Good looking. Nice. Stuff. Uh, are those are those something that you're sharing or something that you're selling? Uh, well, I've, I've, I've 
I haven't showed. I actually stole it from um, <laughs> from Alex from uh, Greece. He he put the original. He made up his own thing. But it's just a plain fence. Mm-hmm. So I was looking at it and I thought, I just wonder if I could put an insert in there, which I, and then I just made up an insert, put it in there, and and everything else. So I haven't put it on Thingiverse or anything yet, but yeah, I'll okay. get around to it. Those um, display things were on Thingiverse. Yeah. Um, I don't have a link for it, but yeah, it's there somewhere. I'm sure it we disappears. Can find <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing those. They look fantastic. Not a problem. Uh, did anybody else have any show or tell that they wanted to show or tell? Chris, do you have anything? Okay, not hearing Chris, we're going to move on to Club Corner. If you have a Club Corner activity you would like to talk about, now's the time to do that. I'll just toss a little tidbit in that this is the third week that I've run the, we're running a sideways group five series with my analog club. And this is the third week that I've used the Nivea blue hand lotion for my uh, scale auto foam rubber tires instead of the scale auto tire cleaner. Uh, because no matter how hard I tried, I always ended up making the, the scale auto foam rubber delaminate from the wheels using the cleaner. Anywho, somebody told me that the Nivea hand lotion worked real well, so I'm trying that out. So far, it's working real well. Not losing any grip over the night because we can only do tire tire prep once at the beginning of the race. And so far, so good. So well, I'll let you know if anything changes with that. Uh, but otherwise, we had a good time at uh, you know one of our club tracks, wood routed track. You can check the video that I posted yesterday and see how much fun we had. <laughs> Despite the computer, for whatever reason, not receiving the output from the DS uh, lap timing hardware. So we had to write it all down. <laughs> After every one minute, we would write down the laps for everybody then do the second minute and then write down their laps and then figure out the bonus points for who won and oh, good and fun. but i got third place so that's all that matters not last Whoop. <laughs> all right jeremy's ready to do some uh, club corner go for it go for it jeremy. hey uh the last race we had at my house i don't usually share but i just got a new internet connection i'd like to see if this share actually works for a video or now or not sure. so i want to optimize for video here let's see your, your audio is different uh oh! I, I noticed that it's good. I thought his voice just changed. Right, I have a cold. Or he's sick. So maybe that's oh, there it. we go. He's got a cold. Uh, is this video playing? <laughs> yep, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, just curious. Okay. That was all I need. It was Fly Classic non-magnet. So I just want to see if it worked. Cool. You can unst or stop my share. No, oh, you did it just fine. <laughs> all right. Yeah. No, just for good. for future reference, I want to know if I can share these or not because I, I hate choppy videos and like well, i mean that, that was like, about what? that was about four fps maybe five or six fps it was better no, that's than... still right. I'll, I'll watch this back on the youtube replay and see what it looks like for you. it was it was okay for me all right it, it, it looked like everybody was having fun though jeremy yeah now nah, they were all miserable no, i'm <laughs> just kidding no i'm just kidding it's a good time we have like three races this month it's kind of crazy all of a sudden we're going we're doing like two or three races every month now so nice. It's really yeah, picked awesome. up in our area. Good deal. The more, the better. Hey, you should you should yeah. transfer that to New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Send some of that over to New Jersey. All right, Mike, you're yeah. next. Well, I'm you're not muted. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was ready, but I wasn't. I wasn't muted like I thought I was. <laughs> um, we ran all F ones this this week, so we had. Polycar Classics, and then we had the NSR and um, Scale Auto uh, earlier or later um, F1s. And then we tried to one, run a, a modern F1 Polycar, but about 20 laps in, I lost the pinion on one of the cars. And we only had three cars, so <laughs> that's sort of it for that race um that's the first failure i've had it's one of the new plastic pinions that polycar came out with and they're beveled um so i'm i'm gonna have to figure out something to do with that maybe go back to the the other style i i think what happened to the pinion it's fun it right it just yes uh it's not it's not split but it's um it spun on the shaft 
It's the, the motor shafts for those pinions are narrowed. Yeah, they are. It's too much friction. But I've had that happen on other cars, so I'm not particularly surprised. But I was disappointed. <laughs> well, if it's nil, then there's room in there for a dab of glue. Just uh, I tried that, and it still it won't hold. Mm. So, I've I've tried Loctite, and I've tried super glue, and I tried a little bit of epoxy, but nothing seems to hold on to it real well. Um, the the nylon pinion apparently is just doesn't have anything to stick to it. So. Um, I'm going to have to get another opinion somehow. I don't know if anybody's got them. I may have to get the motor. Um, I haven't seen opinions yet. At least I don't know of any. Yeah, so sort of uh, blown out of the water on the F1s until I get that fixed. But anyway, the, the, the other videos, uh, which I will put up, I've been a little busy rehabbing the house, so I haven't had time to put the other two video, videos up yet. They'll be up soon. So... But um, the other ones, I, I actually had a, uh, uh, one of the Polycar Classic cars, I took it out of the box just before we raced it. And I essentially threw a set of tires on, didn't even, oh, I did sand them on the track a little bit and uh, uh, was testimony to not uh, being able to make the tires true <laughs> because there were a lot of offs with that car. <laughs> as a result of it it was fast i set the fast lap time but i couldn't get it to be consistent enough it would uh it would not not do me very well so that one's got to have some work and uh, speaking of what henry was talking about it's the the maintenance i'm doing i'm doing three sets of cars every week three sets of three cars so i've got nine cars to prepare every single week that takes a lot of effort and time to do that and I try to make them fairly even too. So um, we did a little balance of performance on voltage this time. And uh, poor Shiggy got the short end of the stick on that one. He was, he had the fast car, but um, he, uh, he got sort of penalized because the other, the, the other two cars got elevated a little bit. So it, uh, and it's only three, three tenths of a volt difference, but it's enough. So good fun. Oh, is that the oh. Okay. I guess they are. I in. guess I guess there'll be an order soon. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why they're not making brass. Um, well, I think that's a bevel. They're they're nice and quiet and smooth, but bevel brass gears. Yeah, but it's for some reason or other they beveled them now. Um I don't know. It, it, to make them in brass would mean that you would have to machine the, the parts and they're, they're very small, whereas bra normal brass pinions are extruded. Yeah, yeah. It would be more expensive for sure. It would be a lot more expensive. It wouldn't go on a nailed motor shaft either, would it? The reason. Plus if it were, yeah, brass would go on. It just depends on how big the hole was to start with. Yeah, it's 1.5 because they're FF motors. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... So the so the car so the type of car specifically that has that gear that stripped on you or not stripped but loosened up yeah the monoposto okay yeah but it's it some of the monopostos and some of the newer classics as well uh, it's a kind of a running change in the in the whole um, uh, polar car rear end that they've changed away from the from the regular pinion. Um, and the straight spur gear and the crown gear to the beveled the beveled set uh, because the new um, the BRM uh, has the bevels in it as well. Mm. Did okay. some of the, did any of the earlier monopostos have straight gears? Yeah, all of them, all uh, the early ones, as have, far as I know. We, we raced them at last uh, on Monday for our IROC, and they they. They ran great, except that track has two squeeze sections, so it was oh. carnage yeah. with. Yeah, they're you know, quite big. Yeah. But yeah, they were probably straight. Probably so perfect. this is the early one that I've got. Yeah, you can see oh. it. That has a brass pinion. That's yeah. the straight pinion, yeah. That yeah. Brass pinion, straight pinion, a spur and a crown gear. Yeah. Uh, on the lay shaft. Now the new ones have the. 
the bevel set. Okay. Yep. Bevel pinion and beveled. Bevel pinion and beveled and beveled uh, the, uh, gear. Well, chrome. Yeah. I wonder if the bevel pinion allows people to easily get the mesh correct without having to shim that lay shaft. Can you adjust it? Uh, well, if you if you've got a bevel, you can move the pinion in and out to adjust right. it. If you can adjust it, that that fine. Yeah, I would have thought it would be actually worse that way, but maybe not. I haven't thought about it. The one that I have with the bevel in the BRM is very nice, just out of the box. Yeah, I've got a BRM too, and it's quite nice. I haven't had any problems with any of the other ones, but that was a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been run for, I think, two sets of races now. That's probably why. So, well, <laughs> you're no, using it. Duh. 250 laps on a, on <laughs> you know, four second laps. It's not that much. <laughs> Yeah, but these aren't these aren't uh, crazy fast, you know, speed crazy moron cars. That these no. are toys that are expected. Yeah, to no, I understand. So yeah, that, yeah, I don't know. You know, did sure. you did you change the rear tires? Are you running the regular tires? Um, I'm running the G25s. So you're getting more grip at the rear. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still a slotted product. Hmm. Yeah, it should it should it should be able to handle it. And it's not, it's on scale electrics track, so it's not a grippy true. track. No, no, it's also true. Something to keep an eye on, that's for sure. Make sure mm -hmm. if yeah. it's happening, make sure Mauricio knows about it. All right, thank you, Mike. And let's move on to Mr. Rose. Okay, let's see here. Share. Um, we had a race last weekend at Silicon City Speedway. And uh, it's, it's, it's in San Jose, obviously the name Silicon City. And we had four classes. We run our uh, GT cars as Carrera slash scale electrics combined. Uh, I'm not terribly in favor of that, but it seems to work out fine. The winner was the orange McLaren in the middle right. And uh, there are some scale electrics. There's some Carreras and so forth. So they, we had a good time with those cars. We always do. You could probably sure. add the SCX um, Corvette into that now too. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, nobody around here has one, I don't think. But yeah, it's uh, and right now it's Carrera and Scale Electrics. I'm not sure if he's going to add that or not. But so we'll see. Um, you the just class? class become a McLaren class. Is that was that mostly yeah. McLarens? I saw lots of vets in there. Yeah, yeah. the McLarens finished one two. And I, I'd yeah. like to, they're not my, it's not my track, so it's not my thing to alter the rules, but I would alter the rules somewhat, but that's what this track is, so. Is it uh, Scalex McLaren or is it the Carrera McLaren? Scale Electrics. Okay. Yeah. The Scale Electrics Porsches seem to be extremely fast. Yeah. So there's, it's not a cut and dry that the McLarens are just dominating, but uh, uh, so th there is some variety there. There's only two uh, McLarens. He in allows... Uh, you can change the rear wheels. You can put aluminum rear wheels on it um, and pull all the electrics out of it. So it's just hardwired to the motor. So there's a few little modifications you can do. Am I missing uh, a car? We also ran group C. I only saw two McLarens in that field. Am I missing yeah. a car? One, two, yep, two. Okay. Two. And no, they one finished in the front first row, and second, but it was row. more of a good driver as opposed to yeah. just yeah. being outright the fastest. There was other fast cars there as well. Yeah. Uh, the other class we ran in was Group C. Nobody in Northern California has won Group C since the Nationals with a Jaguar. It's all been other cars. So we thought about banning the Jaguar, but we didn't. And it doesn't seem to, especially on the small tracks, yeah, and the, a regular rule set as opposed to what Electric Dreams did for the Nationals, the Jaguar has not dominated. It's still good, but it's <laughs> not dominated at all. Yeah, it's good news. You can't put those uh, NSR F1 tires under there. Yeah, uh, you can't run with yeah. the skirts either, without the skirts yeah. either. Um, I, the <clears throat> Nissan was the winner. So was, I think it's the only Nissan there is that there's a bunch of Jaguars, only only one of the new Jaguars, the XGR10, bunch of Porsches, and the Nissan was the winner. Uh, and it's RF1, we're getting people with nice liveries, including Mike's, uh, Mike Andrews, the owner of the track in the Benetton. Uh, the one on the right is a custom paint that I did with the Senna helmet, because the Senna McLarens are or the McLarens are pretty expensive if you want to buy one 
uh, with a standard livery or the factory livery on it. You guys so I do did that one. You guys allowing any tire? Because there's quite a tire difference on a lot of those. They're all really? the same tires. Really? That one of the Marlboro looks modify. really wide. Well, you can run, you seven. can narrow the tires because the, the F1 wheel is only 10 millimeters wide. Oh, if okay. you want to narrow it to 10 millimeters, you can, because it's the same wheel. Uh, right. On this track, there is absolutely zero benefit to run a narrow tire. On the big commercial tracks that are spray glued, there's a huge advantage to running a narrow tire. So uh, uh, you, you've got to have different tires for different tracks. That's just the way it is. It always has been with slot cars and always will be. Um the last class and the one I'm kind of proud of is uh, the uh, this is Le Mans Classic. So you can see the variety of the cars and kind of what's legal. Um, I was running the red Mercury GT. And if you haven't, I talked about that, I think, last week or the week before. Uh, Mercury got jealous and said, why can't we have a Ford GT? So they badged it as a Mercury for a couple races. <laughs> this particular livery car ran at Daytona with Gurney and Foyt as badged as a Mercury. And uh, they didn't win that race, but this car did win this race uh, over a field of 908s and other open cockpit cars. So I'm looking forward to getting this car down to Electric Dreams next week because this is my primary enduro car. This was the first real race slash shakedown for this car on a track with similar grip. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, that, that was last weekend. So we had a, we had a very, good, uh, very good turnout, a lot of fun. Jim, so that that was a mix between slot at NSR and Thunder Slot. All yeah, it, it, the class is is labeled as Le Mans Classics prototypes only, so no Group Five cars or things like that. And so you can run a 908, you can run a, a the Matra. The Matra ran really well. The Ford GT is allowed, obviously, because that's a prototype from that area. From was, there that like era. A, was there like a spec motor or anything? Or uh, it's limited to 23k, so basically stock motors. Yes. Uh, I ran this. I ran the twenty one five, which is the, the spec motor for the enduro. My car was completely enduro. It was legal for this class, as well as enduro legal. So, um, looking forward to getting down there next week and seeing Dennis and everybody else and uh, see how we do. I will look forward to seeing you too. Good show, awesome. Was that a slotted or a NSR or GT? It's an uh, NSR. NSR. The, the the Electric Dreams enduro is only for. NSR four GTs or okay, so that means the Mercury is not allowed, right? The Mercury is <laughs> not allowed. <laughs> Just take off that badge, you'll be fine. <laughs> All right, thanks again, Jim, for sharing. And Mr. Cunningham, did you have some Club Corner stuff you wanted to share? Oh, just a thing or two. Um, uh, didn't mean to imply that uh, racing wasn't happening in uh, in New Jersey. Um, uh, <laughs> The other raceways were fine. Just Teaneck is a puzzle. Um, here on, on uh, Saturday, we're doing our monthly uh, uh, call it open open house event here, and we'll be supplying uh, wamps for the analog race and uh, uh, Carrera 124 cars for the uh, digital race. Uh, it's all house stuff. We're uh, rebuilding and getting to the point now where where guys are starting to buy cars, and uh, we'll. Uh, soon pick some classes and and uh, be racing at several tracks. We've got a couple different club members building tracks. Uh, uh, Greg just finished his um, Carrera digital uh, oval, a large uh, oval, and we held a race on that uh, two weeks ago. It was good fun. Uh, he ran the Carrera GTs, but I think uh, we're going to migrate to uh, Pioneer uh, Legends on that one. Uh, that'll be good fun. Uh, six driver digital. Uh, chips, we'll put the career chips in the legends. Um, a thought uh, about food at, at events. Um, I stopped doing that a while ago because I never really know how many people are gonna show up. And so I, I hate leftovers. Uh, so uh, a tradition that we've done for years is um, uh, we supply all the cars, the controllers and so forth for, for these introductory events. Um, and then uh, ask the um, participants to bring something to share. And uh, I actually found that that works out pretty well as uh, we do have a best uh, food award uh, that we vote on. And uh, <laughs> some people do try and we've, we've had some, some interesting and, and, and good wine and things that, that uh, people put some effort into. Uh, 
sometimes I find when we, when we include a best food award, we tend to get more couples. The women compete heavily for the best food award. Uh, so there's a thought. No, that's a great idea. <laughs> I think it's a great idea to integrate drinking and driving. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get invitations to do <laughs> driving parties very much anymore. So uh, yeah. we, uh, we, we encourage that. And it, Happy it, Van it, Winkle. Uh, oh, my God. This is the Arkansas Beer and Slut Car Club. Never mind. It gives I, a whole new meaning. To wrong. It gives a whole new meaning to vintage racing. Do you have food before or after the races? We have before, yes. We have a one hour. Uh, so have you banned uh, Cheetos yet or do you put out finger bowls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one hour before and uh, then we get down to racing. And that, that, that also deals with people that, that show up late. We, that way we, we got a, an hour buffer to uh, decide who's, who's uh, ready to go. Yep. Good stuff. Good, good advice. And I guess the floor is open. There was one thing that I wanted to uh, mention uh, for people who might not have seen this news. Let me bring up my link here. Uh, and let me share my screen here. Most of you guys will probably already be aware of this, but Scale Auto is now making Rolling chassis for fly bodies. Oh, yeah. And there is a very large catalog of excellent fly bodies out there dying for a half decent chassis to, to be put <laughs> under it. So I'm looking forward to those hitting the market. I mean, I've got mm -hmm. a couple of flies that, that uh, deserve a decent chassis that I really don't feel like 3D printing and buying new parts for. I'd much rather just put a scale auto chassis on my list. Well, well, the next thing is they should do that for Carrera bodies, which are equally as lovely. NASCARs. They're, they're, Carrera's a little bit heavier, I mean, <clears throat> than fly bodies, but yeah. Whatever, there's there's stuff in the fly range that Carrera haven't even got close to yet. Though. Yeah, that too. So yeah. That'll be good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I nice. thought that was worth uh, bringing up and maybe having a little chat about, but whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, Jim, are you done or did you have something else? No, that's really all I had. Okay, yeah. put your hand down. And Dennis put his hand up. What we want to talk about, Dennis? Yeah, I just realized that I had a show and tell when we started talking about Corvettes and I said something about the SCX, the SCX Corvette. Um, it, uh, we managed, or Marco managed to get a, a small number of them because the, this particular SCX wasn't released for for the US, but we have them in stock in both the yellow and the gray and the gray or silver. Um, it's actually exactly the same body as the oh god, why is it so I don't know what's happened to my to my um oh there we go. There we go. Um it's actually exactly the same body as the scale electric car. Uh so I presume that um that SCX and Scalextric have managed to at least collaborate uh, to a certain degree because uh, the, the body is the body's identical. The chassis is different though uh, because it's just a regular, I've already taken the magnet out of this one, obviously. Um, and I've run it so there's oil on the bottom. Uh, it has the regular um, uh, SCX double braid guide system and it has the the regular SCX non-wiring, non-wire wiring system inside with the little uh, um, beryllium copper strips. And it has the new RF or FR42 mm -hmm. motor in it. Um, and actually runs really very nicely, very similar to the way that the scale electric car runs. Uh, it looks uh, like they kept their, their magnet system that you could raise and lower. Is that yes. Right? Yeah, they have. Uh, I took it. I took this one out because I changed the tires to. Uh, I put silicones on the back, and I lost some of the ground clearance, and I don't need the magnet anyway. But it was starting to scrape. So, um, but I'm glad they kept uh, that though. For, for actually, the... even even with the regular um, with the regular tires, uh, it's it's actually pretty nice. Uh, it runs on a wood track. It ran pretty nice with the with the regular tire. And then the other thing that I was showing here is that I've got it sitting on a piece of board that I've that I made many years ago, um, that just has a piece of uh, 
you can see just under there a little piece of um, styrene rod glued on the bottom. It's not quite straight anymore, but it's glued on the bottom and a line across it. And you were talking earlier, right at the beginning of the show today, about about front to rear balance. Uh, that's that's the easy way to do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you just move the car to where it balances or is tipping Correct. easily. Yeah. Right now it's tipping to the front. You move it back a little bit so that it's yeah. either either tipping or just staying where it should do. And within a millimeter or so, then I just use a, a scale and I measure from the rear from the rear center of the rear wheels to the line that's on the middle there. And then measure the wheelbase, and as a percentage, you can work out what the weight distribution is. That looks pretty close to 50 50 to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little bit more at the rear because that's a little shorter than that. 55 45. Yeah, something like yeah. that. I haven't actually checked it, Greg, but I can do that. <laughs> yeah, Henry was showing off their 3D printed that... version of that. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Is that the Egyptian yeah. method? This. Um, Actually, uh, it was uh, Sumerian. It was before the Egyptians. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for showing that, Dennis. You're and welcome. Jim put his hand back up. What would you like to bring oh, up? I just had uh, 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 on the subject of uh, 1.5 uh, millimeter uh, motor shaft pinions. Um, uh, I just wondered if anyone has a uh, source for for those for replacing those in uh, in the uh, Carrera Porsche 917s or or even uh, some of the uh, well some of the other 1.5 motor shafts. Yeah, slotted slotted make um, brass pinions that have a 1.5 hole. Yeah. Mr. MR slot for right OD, OD for Carrera. They're uh, 5.5 the slotted ones. Yeah. Five five. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also you can also get them from MR slot car. They make them in brass and steel, different diameters. Actually, very nice pinions. They are all uh, cut uh, by a guy named Phil Hackett from Sonic. So yeah. uh, the the precision on them is very very high. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, the floor is open. If anybody has anything they want to talk about, circle back on, ask about, brag about. All right, Jim, what you got? Uh, well, for what it's worth, I don't know. Has anybody used the uh, Scale Auto AS25 tires? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they announced a replacement for the AS25. I'm not sure if it's, I shouldn't say that. I'm not sure if it's a replacement, but they say it's an improvement, whether it's going to be replaced or just an addition. I think it's uh, an addition. So it's AS20. They say it's a little bit better. Uh, I stuck my neck out and said, well, we've never seen AS25 in the United States. Where are we going to see these? I put that on their website when they announced or the, their Facebook page. So uh, who knows about availability? But I just, I just happened to see that, I think, yesterday. Oh. And they're slightly different color. If you go on their YouTube, uh, keep saying YouTube, on their Facebook page, uh, they say they're slightly, uh, uh, they're not gray, but they're a little bit lighter black or dark gray. So you can distinguish them between the AS25. Okay, so that's nice. a new product that will be coming out whenever, who knows when we'll ever, when or if we'll ever see them. The AS25s so are what was on the, um, on the uh, scale of the Formula Ones, right? Yeah, yeah, you you can get them on cars. I've never seen them for yeah. sale in the United States. No, no, so, I haven't either. But the but the tire that's on the car actually works yeah, pretty yeah. well. And the, the, yeah, I think their GT cars come with a different size of AS twenty fives as well. The newer GT cars, but okay, trying to get a replacement is yeah near to impossible. Uh, Expensive way to buy a set of tires if you buy yeah, a rather car. Yeah, yeah. Who's the who's the is um is Alan Smith the, the, the importer and distributor for Scale Auto? I think so. As far as I know, and yes. He has had in the past some AS twenty fives on his I've, website. I've looked at him on his website. I've never seen him. Okay. He and has he had, had some in the past. You got to call him. Yeah, I mean, things uh, come yeah. into the shop and and don't hit the website before they're gone. So if if you want them, you got to call him. Yeah, I asked him about it when they first came out, and you know, yeah, they're coming, and I'd never heard anything. 
Right. Yeah, you got a pest room. <laughs> yep. He's basically right. in that entire racing center and and an online store by himself. Just say nothing about trying to be a distributor at the same time yeah. and yeah. deal and and support other whole uh, other retailers. And, yeah. yeah, and well, Revo slot too. So he's got a lot on his plate. No, no question. Yeah, and and trying to build BRM cars that are on back order. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's got a plate full of stuff. That's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. All of his stone making, of course. The, the, and <clears throat> the trick is the trick with calling him is to cut him off. You know, get your answer and and say thanks, Alan. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you'll talk your ear off for thirty more minutes while he's got better things to do. But he'll yeah. he'll do I, it. And I've I've never had a problem getting a hold of him. No, he'll no. always answer. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And then he'll talk your ear off about just about anything related to slot cars. So <laughs> get your answer. Get out. I, I don't know anybody here who's like that at all. All right, we're ending the show now. I'm going to hit the stop button. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mike, what you got? Oh, uh, just ah. as an addendum for anybody who wanted to know what a Dacon Monza was. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got one of those. Those are supposed it's to not nice. be ugly? Pardon me? Those are supposed to not be ugly? <laughs> I know. I like them. I like the way they look. I've seen the real cars race, and they're great. Good reason. So, yeah, there's a couple, a couple that race regularly on the West Coast in vintage racing. Yeah. Any of those Group 5 cars, uh, Neil's got one too. Any of those Group 5 cars were pretty ugly with those big fenders and well, tiny little cool. wheels up front. Is that? There we go. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Shinier. Yeah. Yeah, that's because I race mine. <laughs> Burn. Oh, no. He just doesn't come off. Ooh, oh. burn! Oh. Good one. Oh. Tell you something. I, I get so I get so jealous when I look at Neil's uh, uh, race race Is room behind him, him with a with a with a ceiling and and <laughs> lights and no dust and no dirt and. My track stands out behind, you know, in the patio behind my garage, and uh, I'm expecting a friend around on Friday, and I, I had so much work today. Just, you know, just take a dustpan and just dust the dust, only the dust, off just the top that covers the track, mm. and it fills that dustpan, right? And then to say nothing of the floor and the oh. garage and all the rest. I was thinking today, man, I would love to have one of those spots where you could put a ceiling in and I can leave my track open all day and I can leave my cars open all day and be able to. Uh, Dennis, you need to move to Arkansas. You could buy uh, a home 10 times the size of yours for the same price. Right. Yeah, but uh, did, I, I didn't buy the dust that's here either, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then the, your the dust, the dust room is free. Your yeah, soccer no, room would be a nice big room with this fully air conditioned. Yeah, sure. No, no, I agree with you. Yeah. They just the, dust is a, the dust is a no option option out here. Right? Yeah. It's and it's it I think what it a lot of it is um with all the roads and the freeways and, and the cars around here, you get this very, very fine black dust everywhere. And uh, it's not a it's not a it's not an organic thing. It's coming from it's coming from human activity. It's not it's not natural. Don't breathe it in. <sighs> Don't have a choice. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. On that on that scale auto uh fly chassis thing we had mentioned earlier, are those three D printed chassis or are they making injection molded plastic uh, chassis? All injection molded. Yeah. Nice. Injection molded. Okay. Oh, That's even proper. better. All right. Yeah. Are they available from anywhere? I, I think it's yet, coming so soon. Just it come says. out. Yeah, yeah, just announced. So. I might have more info for you next week after I've had a chance to speak to Marco because he's been in Spain the last week. So. Yeah, I was we thinking specifically out. for the Fly Nine Seventeen. Well, you know, the Fly Nine Seventeen, they uh, Fly themselves had a had a a, a release uh, of the car with uh, with a, I think an Olifer uh, made chassis with an angle winder with a pod, the whole deal. It's actually a very, very nice little car. Let me go get it. So it looks like we got the M1. Then what's this guy? 
Lancia. Lancia, okay. And then Porsches. Five twelves. Five twelves and nine seven and nine seventeen. Okay. Or that a five twelve. I'm terrible. That's I was thinking of the nine seventeen okay. thirty. Okay. On the left, is that a Ferrari five twelve? Yeah. Yeah, five twelve okay. and then nine seventeen. Yeah. And then seventy first nine thirty five. Yeah. I'll have a bunch of them. Lola on the right. Yeah. And then it looks like they have a sidewinder or in one. That's kind of cool. Those shots taken at the um, slot car festival. Spain's equivalent of the slot car festival. Yeah. Good or done, yeah. Collaboration with Rafa Fly Model, Hyper Model, Fly Racing Evo. Yeah, looks, looks like good stuff. Looking forward to it. Hopefully they do, hopefully that's successful and they do more because I've got a storm that I really want to put a decent chaster, chassis under. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I wish somebody would start tackling the front motor flies. I mean, they made so many front motor cars that are just, you can't race them. Exactly. Yeah, the storm. Did anybody awesome. show that while I was away? Because I found the fly with the Ola for chassis. No, no, please. You, if you have a picture. Coming up. Coming up. Neil's got yeah, I have one of those front motor. <laughs> it is horrible. Oh, yeah. 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 Without the matter, it's really undrivable. This one here, the, the pinion uh, just spun right off. No. It was the very first time I put it on the track, and I tried to replace it. And as you can see, oh. the drive shaft spring that holds the two pieces together is all messed up. Yeah. It's, just, it's so long, there's no way to... Uh, to get them uh pressed on coming off is easy because it just slipped off but um yeah i don't have any front motor cars that i like the way they yeah, are just give up on front motor and... <clears throat> yeah, but i like uh, i like the car so if i could figure out a chassis <laughs> so this is yeah. your fly body with an all this is this is the fly body and now this is sold by fly as a fly and i think they call it like a, a competition okay. version or a or a, a special version. Are they and still doing that, or they did they basically stop that in in order to make this deal with Scale Auto? I have no idea. Because yeah. that was like this last is, year or something, wasn't it? This, this is, is the, the one I was you know. Right. Yeah, I don't know about that one, but the, okay, this this one actually uh, runs very very nicely. Um, the, the gear mesh is super smooth. It has uh, aluminum wheels front and rear. Uh, the tires were actually pretty good straight out. Although I think I have um, I have in a, uh, either NSRs or slotted on there now. Uh, yeah, there are NSRs that I have on there now. They're, they're probably the super grip for the classic cars. And um, it comes with narrow, hard front wheels, which for a uh, one thirty second scale plastic car is a kind of unusual. Mm -hmm. It has a an almost deep enough, almost thick enough, almost wide enough guide uh, that has almost no slop. Uh, so <laughs> that's pretty nice too. And actually, you know, apart from the fact that it just has a regular fly eighteen and a half k motor, uh, they it runs very very sweetly. It reminds me of a thunder slot for some reason. It's very similar. Yeah. In, is very that a similar two degree in, pitch in, on the motor concept? Yes, yeah, slightly angle winder. Winder. Yeah. No. yeah, I mean, it, it yeah. did have the regular fly five, five hole, uh, or five screw body mounts because it had two on the sides and one at the back and two in the front. Uh, but I've left the the middle ones out and yeah. just uh, it suspended it on the front and the rear because uh, you don't really don't need any more than that. And now they sold that, that all as one piece, like just like that. Yeah, Sell no. it just like that as a kit, yeah, as a, it, as a car, not even I, as a kit. It's a sim. Where'd you get it? Uh, like, was it Electric Dreams? Electric Dreams, yeah. But I know. What do I, what I, do I search like, under? Like a la like last year, Electric Dreams had those. It felt like a year ago. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, I don't think it's even a year ago. I'll have a look. Uh, do I search for Fly Nine Seven? Probably Fly Racing. I don't think have been printed in black Wilder. for that long yet. I'd never even heard of it. That's kind of cool. It's I remember very cool. when you first showed those off, and it was like, "Wow, finally!" <laughs> yeah. Somebody did yeah. something right with Fly. Good, exactly. And now Scale Auto is getting into the into the same game. 
Yeah. At some point, Fly's going to well, have to look I inward love and this see what it's doing. 1730 wrong. that I've got. 91710 if it's Fly. Oh, pardon me, 91710. Yeah, the, this one. Mm. It's got beautiful detailing on it. And the chassis, of course, is just a plastic <clears throat> wrap around. Yeah. That's why. Dennis, I wonder what the spacing is of of the uh, the screws at the rear on that. I wonder yeah. whether the chassis would fit. Probably not. <laughs> is it fly slot wings? Is that what it's Could called? Could well be, yeah. All right. Uh, no, it's just a regular. I think he was asking Dennis. Doesn't the chassis uh, come up the rocker panels or uh, on, on that? Yes, uh, it does. But so, yeah. I've it's, seen a before yeah, it's, something. It, it, it's, it's different. I mean, yeah. you could always chop the rockers off of the of the original chassis. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I have uh, actually had some luck with a uh, with a fly front motor car. This uh, BMW is is one of our uh, favorites that uh, runs well with other other center and rear motor cars in the class. Now it took a lot of tuning. Um, uh, as received, the drive shaft rubbed on the interior and uh, had to had to work on it a bit but uh ultimately um with all that weight up front and magnet of course in the back with the oh, magnet yeah, car magnet uh, they magnet work. the back makes it easy <laughs> yeah no with no magnet uh, i would i wouldn't uh I've, I've never had any luck with a front motor car with with magnet free but uh, in a magnet class um it does fine did you have to uh, anything or just glue shit down because you gotta you had to have glued some things down in there Oh yes, yeah. No, I had to do a little bit of clearancing uh, on on the underside of the um, interior. Uh, of course, you glue the. Uh, I think I replaced the um, the uh, drive shaft bushing with a with a uh, better one, if I recall. Um, but uh, anyway, what I've done sometimes on those is to use it. It's to make a little make a little solid connector between the motor and the drive shaft and actually solder it solid. Mm -hmm. Machine a little, actually machined a little tube with a two millimeter hole in it. Yeah. yeah. And, and solder the whole thing solid all the way back. So you have that, that silly little spring is gone. But yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to know how to do that to keep it straight. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we, we, we have fun with uh, the little front motor cars that we make. Um, yeah. yeah, but yours are properly held in motors with proper, <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it's not like, it, you're talking right, about you and your daughter yeah, make, right? Well, yeah, yeah no, that's proper. That's different. <laughs> okay, yeah, because yeah, that's, that's yeah, there's, there's a lot of, as long as you have this nice and stable yeah. and a good mm -hmm. connection, it, it, they run quite well. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll, we're not talking about front motored in general. We're talking about plastic well, competition, molded toy front uh, motor cars that are yeah, yeah. Like, Jeremy, did you find the, did you you find the car? Yeah, around? I found it. It's under fly slot wings. Uh, yeah. nine seventy. It's like one hundred nineteen bucks. Yeah, yeah, which probably means that there are only one or two left. Yeah. So Neil, you're trying I didn't because I didn't pay that for it. That's for sure. No, it's it's cool. Again, we're like wine. The, the you know the more the less vintage or the more vintage it is, and the fewer items, the more expensive. Neil, what did yeah. you want to find a good chassis for? For this Neil's one Carrera, is the, oh. this Carrera GTO. But I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, take the interior down and cut the back seat out so that I could probably fit like a sidewinder chassis. Uh -huh. You know, because yeah, so this would work. The, with this oh, full yeah. interior, you can't fit anything but a front motor, because that's the only place where there's room. You get a motor there, oh, you you could put the motor in the trunk. Or, or, or Neil, Neil, you could build build a brass chassis with you know the, the motor carrier the way that we do. It'll work. Or build a brass chassis with the motor in the trunk. Put it at the back. There you actually, go. It's Maybe. not as not as silly an idea as it sounds. Maybe two motors in the trunk. <laughs> I mean, that car is screaming for a brass chassis. You're just looking at it. Yeah. Like, I, I think it's... Well, De Dennis, to your, to your point, like, you know, if, uh, doing those uh, old Ravel sort of, you know, Cadillacs and, and uh, Mark IIs, that's the perfect place to put the, the motor for a full interior. You're absolutely right. Sure. 
you might and be able to get me, like an I was gonna say you might, might be able to get an HRS chassis with the uh FF motor adapter because those are a lot lower and sometimes they make FF angle winder or sidewinder. By by the way, I don't know if anyone's interested, but um Atlantis has uh actually released the I guess repop of the uh, I think it's the 56 Cadillac Eldorado. But here's the kicker, they actually created glass for it because the original kit did not have glass, and now they have glass for that uh, multi uh Piece 56. 56? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. No, yeah, you, you said 56. <clears throat> See? Boy. The trying to think. Oh, the is apologizing for being right. There what you is go. That? 56. What does it look like? Total Canadian. <laughs> Looks like an overgrown 56 Chevy. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and and they mold it, and you get two figures. The whole it's the old kit with glass. Yeah. So. Um, Is that a model like, kit? And I think yeah, not, yeah, and I think they're only like twenty bucks U.S., which is like what eighty-five Canadian or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was at Walmart the other day, and uh, they had a small rack of old-style uh, kits, you know, one twenty-fourth scale car kits, and they were. Thirty-three dollars a piece at Walmart. So repopping these things is the, you know, I don't know where they got their guys and whatever, but who's making them? But oh well, and, Walmart's Atlanta's selling them actually for thirty-three dollars a piece. Yeah, Atlanta's Christmas. actually got a lot of the old uh, monogram molds. They actually bought them and they bought the whole bulk. And apparently, when they bought them, they just said take them all and they're still going through them apparently but in in that bulk was uh like um the charles schultz snoopy stuff so i yeah. guess you've seen the snoopy hockey game it, that uh all the revel 130 second scale multi-piece bodies uh oh they, they they've got a treasure trove of, of stuff and they just they're so busy right now they can't release these things quick enough apparently who is that atlantis uh it's an oh American yeah okay yeah, yeah, i think yeah, i think yeah, they, yeah. They they're working out of the old Aurora factory, I think, in New York or something. I, I, I may be wrong about that, but they're in New York, I think. Yeah. Cool. All right. We're winding down to the last couple of minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the stop button. And, of course, everybody come back and chat, and we'll say goodbye. See you next Bye. week.